I am 26 years old, turning 27 in three weeks. It's like, I still want to be 26, but anyway. Um, I'm Swedish, um, hence the name and the introduction there, which is says like, I think you guys pronounce J like H or something like that. So, but um, it's, yeah, so I'm a Ravensbrunn alumni. Um, I know it's not a Thursday, but we are going to do a throwback. So I kind of want to talk um, to you about the journey I've done since 2009 and what I'm obviously doing now. Um, so in 2009, I was in Gothenburg in Sweden, which is a small city, quite boring, but quite nice. Um, I had no idea whatsoever. So I just graduated high school um, and I was like, uh, okay, what, what do you do? Like, what do I do? Who, who am I? What do I, you know, kind of want to do? Um, got so scared, I think, into applying to a course. I think my, parent had, my parents had a bit of, I don't know, a, a say in this. Um, got into international relations. And for me, this is super interesting, right? Because you, who doesn't want to say, you know, developing countries and kind of work as a diplomat, you know, being an important person and all of that. Um, but I realized after like four or five months that actually, even though it's 100% interesting, the passion, like I don't really want to wake up in the morning, I don't really want to go to these like boring theoretical um, kind of courses and you know read thousands of papers. So I kind of obviously got like, uh, actually I need to do some me work. So I've always been a bit of a creative, a maker, do a tinkerer, whatever you want to call it. Um, both of my grandparents, um, my grandmas on both sides are like artists and they've been practicing for a long time. Um, so I've always had this kind of like, you know, I want to create something for nothing and want to go, you know, doing this out in the industry as well. And this kind of leads to 2010 when I decided to pack my life in one suitcase. It was hard, but I kind of did it um, and moved to Sydney. So I enrolled in a foundation degree um, in communication design at Billy Blue College of Design so much design um, and it was absolutely amazing so I, I spent 10 months there but in the eighth or ninth month I kind of realized like yes this is exactly what I want to do but it's kind of like I'm um, far away and obviously it is no shit Sherlock and it is you know like yeah I knew because I flew you know two days to go to come here but for me I kind of like had to pack my life in a bag once again, go back to Gothenburg, and obviously I was super happy because I knew I didn't have to do you know, international relations. I kind of found my passion thing, and it was destined to be something in the creative industry. Um, but I also, I was back in Sweden, and I wanted to be anywhere else but Sweden. So I was like, oh my god, what do I do? But um, for me, this is when the magic begins, um, and it's, I'm going to talk you through this magic later, don't worry. Um, but in 2012, I was accepted into Ravensbourne, so I sat here two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, as a student, um, and I did graphic design, and I absolutely loved it. It was literally awesome. I had an amazing time, um, most because of these four kind of reasons. So the projects that you guys, and if anyone here is from graphic design, you will know, the projects that you get are so varied. Um, there are so many opportunities to kind of engage with live briefs, so please do that. Um, and the tutors, like, amazing. I. I felt it was very personal kind of tutoring like throughout the three years and that kind of really you know shot us in or it put us in a really good position to go out to, into the industry and I also think that we had so many opportunities to engage with the industry as well um, which compared now when I talk to people from other um, universities is quite um, I think that's where Ravensbourne is kind of like excelling but in my third year um, me and my friend Tom Phipps who did motion graphics at the time were elected creative directors of the degree show for the year. Super interesting, obviously it was, I was so chuffed to be a part of this and it was the first real kind of live project that we had to chip, like chip out into the world because it was gonna happen, you know, you know, I can't be ill, I can't do this, can't do, you know, fake it, it's gonna happen. So we obviously, we looked after the visual identity and the logos and the invitations and everything else and it was super interesting but I was also, I kind of realized and in, in hindsight now, um, I know that I was like glancing over to what everyone else was doing. I was like, oh, but how do they produce this year? How do they make it happen? Like, how do they speak to clients? How do they get sponsorship on board and everything? So this is where I was in third year, in mid third year, I think. So, um, and this is sort of when the magic kind of ends. So, you know, when you wake up, you're 100% passionate, you know exactly what you're gonna do, and you have this like tunnel vision. I did not have that in third year. And I was actually quite bored of myself at this point as well. I kind of a bit annoyed. I was like, okay, so I packed my life up, went to Sydney, realized I want to do design, been studying design for two and a half years, only to realize I didn't want to do that. 
Oh my God. But this is also when I kind of, you know, I wanted to stay in the creative industry because I don't want to lose, um, you know, the enticement, the innovation, and like all the good things about um, the creative and design industry. So I asked myself, but what else is out there? And went to so many events. Like I was literally everywhere every single night, right? I met so many people and I did, like, yeah, my industry, my industry knowledge kind of pivoted from here, right? And I started asking questions. So, you know, meeting up with people who I kind of looked up to, people who worked as strategists or planners or project managers or producers, just anyone else but designers, essentially. And I was even more like, oh shit, like, where, where am I actually taking this? Like, why am I asking all of these questions? I'm just about to graduate with a design degree and I'm looking at what else is out there. So. Something happened and the magic little post popped up um, from my friend Fahoud, who also studied um, motion graphics at Ravensbourne at the time. And he said, so I've got this ticket to this thing called Glug. I'm Swedish, so I was like, oh, Glug, yeah, it sounds cool. What is this? <laughs> obviously, Glug, in, <laughs> as we all know. And I was like, yeah, cool, I'm going to come. Um, obviously, it sends a little minion off, because I love minions. And I think we all left feeling wow after this event. Um, they, so we were a few people from Ravensbourne who went, and I think they were really inspired by the work of the, um, the designers, the creatives, and all of that, whilst I kind of left feeling, oh my god, I need to like actually work here. And they were also announcing on the stage um, during the night a couple of times. They were like, oh, so we're also hiring. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go on their website. It did not look like this at the time. This is an actually recent kind of thing. I can't show you the other one because it was hideous. But... Um, they, yeah, so basically Glug is a um, creative community that um, kind of exists to um, celebrate, connect, and kind of upskill people throughout the industry um, on a global level. So it's like, okay, cool. Oh, they look kind of, you know, nice and like, I don't know, funky and whatever, whatnot. So I kind of got really interested. And at the time, obviously, I was kind of looking into visual identity, really looking into their brand. And they were hiring for a community manager. And for anyone who knows a community manager, it means everything manager. And it's just a fancy title for something that they basically need you to do everything, right? So on the job spec, it was seven cities that needed support globally to run Glug events. There were four events in London that had to be produced and kind of directed and done. Um, social media, PR, and brand development as well. And I was like, oh, that sounds amazing, but I've got no experience. What do I do? So I came in, and I had my first interview had to show them passion, right? Because, and also industry knowledge. And that was all I had really to barter with. I got a second interview and I realized that actually, I need to go in and do something different. And this is something I always tell everyone, like please do show them what you can do and what you would do differently if you get a second or a third interview, right? Go in there, do a bit of like a business audit, look at the stuff that you can find online and see where you can add value. So I did that and I kind of, I was a bit cheeky as well. So I was like, you know, so how, this is how I'd start. So the question is, when can I start? And they still say that this is the only reason I got the job. And I was up against someone who's worked in PR for three years. But the way that I could show that I'm a self-starter as well as, I don't know, being passionate and knowledgeable um, about the industry meant that I got this question. I was like, nah, three days? Like, I can't do no research. I'm going to be like, what? This is Friday. I'm going to start on Monday. I was so scared. But obviously, I replied, oh, of course, I'm coming in on Monday. What time do you need me? Great. So fast forward two years, and this is where we are today, and I've actually kind of had this actual ma magic kind of thing. And what kind of, what I'm really passionate about is that everyone need, you know, should go through the same journey of finding what is you know, not just a job, but also a passion. And it can grow from something out of nothing into something that you can really you know, wake up in the morning and feel that you want to do something with. And for me, it is because I get to inspire, I get to upskill, I get to connect creatives on a global level, and I really feel that that is you know, the kind of passion um, that I personally have, like I want to make sure that the future talent kind of pipeline of the industry is way more equipped than, you know, than we might have been a few years ago or even today. So for me, I updated my um, job spec as well. So this is what I do at the time, at the moment. Um, we run 33 cities around the world. I produce 15 events here in London. We look at the kind of brand development or everything that comes through in like marketing, communication, strategy, through to application and shipping. Um, I also work with a lot of brands because they obviously want to get in touch with kind of um, the community that we've got. And then also I look after and I really love the operations of the franchise on a global level. 
And I think it all comes down to the fact that I've been given epic bosses. And I kind of, you know, this is something I'm going to talk about because I have a few on slides. As you can tell, I love slides. But that is so, so important. Really recognize the fact and like really digging deep into the bosses that you are interviewing with. Like who are they? What would they do? What sort of cameras would they give you? And what sort of opportunities does the job role kind of hold for you? And obviously a lot of hard work, as we all know. So I kind of want to just run through five things that I've learned. Um, still, this is me. Every time I wake up in the morning for a few seconds, I'm like, ah, okay, it's good. I've got everything on my to-do list, and you know, I kind of like bring myself back to the fact that I can do this. I made this happen. But it is the state of the industry, and I think it's quite refreshing once you know that. It is, you know, we kind of know what we are doing, but we also really don't know. So the first one, networking. I was the shyest girl. Um, who could ever, like, I don't know, walk of the place of the earth in Sweden. I was like, you know, whatever we're not. It was the most terrifying thing for me. And it isn't cringe, like sales people, um, I think, no, so networking has always had a bit of like a sales reputation. Like it is for the sales people to, you know, break new grounds and new business. But it isn't really, and it isn't hard either. And what's really worked for me is this, like go in, and really focus on your, you know, the person you're talking to. Focus on the rest of the room rather than yourself. Go in and be interested rather than being, you know, setting out to be the most interesting person in the room because it's not going to work that way. If you just talk about yourself, 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 instead of asking questions, the conversation stop and stops there. Um, that really, check, you know, kind of gave me an opportunity to kind of, you know, obviously you have to practice it and whatever. But it is be interested over interesting. And it, have a bit of fun as well. Like, it's not the end of the world if you don't get any business cards. It's not the end of the world if they say something, you know. I, since I found this gift, I always say I'm going to go networking. And like, no one knows. Like, it sounds like networking, right? But it's not networking, actually. And, it, you know, just have a bit of fun and don't be scared. Um, and I think also there is a bit of like this notion of, you know, oh, like we're creatives. and we don't necessarily have to have a future plan, or I just want to make beautiful stuff in them as well. And yes, please, like find your passion, but also be quite serious. Like identify where you want to go and identify where you are today and have a plan. Like, you know, figure out what you need to do in, you know, the kind of skills gap or the knowledge gap or whatever else it might be. And I think also we all live in a capitalist society. So learn about business. Learn about the way it works. See, you know, what kind of you know big agencies are out there. What sort of networks uh, works across the world or in London and whatever. Figure out who the players are. You know, who is um, currently hot in the industry and whatever, whatnot. I think it's just you know, business is quite creative at, at the end of it, and just realizing that you know early on, and also adhering to the, the to the fact that the stakeholders who are your bosses, they are gonna you know decide your future anyway in the business that you're in. Unless you're a freelancer, because then you're your, your own stakeholder, which is amazing. I guess. I haven't done it, but anyway. And then also, don't settle, settle until you find your magic. So, like, figure out what it is. You know, do a bit of me work. We're like, we've done homework for our entire life, right? We've done coursework for the last one, two, three years here, here at Ravensbourne. But do a bit of me work and really figure out what makes you kind of wake up in the morning. And this is someone that I, I've never met Emma, but we're like friends on Twitter, and it's amazing. It's really great. Definitely get on Twitter as well as Instagram. It is really, you know, the point, get yourself out there, talk to people, open conversations. Um, zigzag your way around. Like, you know, me, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Today, I kind of know what I want to do, but I'm sure I'm going to do 10 other stuff apart from that thing that I think I want to do in the future, right? And it's okay. And also this, please can we all just agree to this? Never work for an asshole. It's not worth it for you, for them, or whatever else. It's just going to bring you down. Um, and the fourth thing, a job is like a gym membership. So the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it, right? And I kind of like this analogy because it is about creating your own opportunities. And we all know that. It's like, no, oh, Molly, stop. Like, it's so obvious. But it, it really is. And it is about saying yes more times than you say no. And it is about, you know, if someone is having, I don't know, the studio manager might not be in today. Like, say that you can, you know, you can guard the phone or you can open the doors and welcome the clients, whatever, whatnot. Like, look outside of your job title and see where you can add another set of values. And make yourself, I don't know, indispensable or whatever that word is, you know. Make yourself, oh, and again, never work for a bloody asshole, okay. Embrace the future. So the robots are coming, right? And it's not scary. It's not going to make us less creative. It's not going to make us, you know, um, I don't, yeah, just less creative, essentially. There are so many opportunities that I can see for creative 
problem solvers, for creative thinkers, for you know, people who work in media through to um, design through to whatever and whatnot. They are going to open up so many new job roles in the industry that you guys, this is something I was um, kind of advised by my mentor in Adobe. She said, start looking into this now because in 10 years time, you wish you started today. Figure out the way the machine learning works. Figure out the way the VR or mixed reality kind of intercepts in the industry and how that's going to drive the future of advertising. Cryptocurrency is like, oh God, we're no finance, you know, we don't work in finance here, right? But figure out, like, what is that going to, you know, it, how is that going to impact you in the future? Robotics and also smart objects or smart products, you are going to be working in that kind of, you know, sector in the future. So pick it up now rather than in 10 years where you wish you did. Um, and also spot your opportunities. There are going to be so many opportunities um, for you to be creative, not just in those sectors, but in your own sector as well, obviously. And that's it. I'm done rambling, but please be interested over interesting, right? If there is one thing that you are going to take away is, you know, dare to be serious, find your magic, more yes, less no, and then embrace the future. But also, please, do not accept working for an asshole in the future. Cool, thank you so much. <laughs>